It was a warm evening in Los Angeles, 1969. Inside a nondescript building on the UCLA campus, a small group of researchers huddled around a bulky computer. This was no ordinary machine. It was a node, the first node of a revolutionary network, ARPANET. This network held the promise of connecting computers across vast distances, an idea that seemed like science fiction at the time. The air crackled with anticipation. The researchers prepared to send the first message, a simple login command, from UCLA to the Stanford Research Institute, hundreds of miles away. The researchers held their breath as they hit enter. The computer whirred and blinked. Then, silence. The connection crashed. The first attempt to send data over this groundbreaking network had failed. Undeterred, they dove back into the problem, determined to get it right. Little did they know this seemingly insignificant event was the first faltering step in a journey that would change the world forever. The team worked feverishly, tracing wires and checking connections. After a tense hour, they tried again, this time success. The message went through, marking the birth of the internet as we know it. This small team had just taken the first step toward connecting not just computers, but people, ideas and cultures in ways never before imagined. To understand the origins of the internet, we must travel back to a time of global tension, the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a technological and ideological battle for supremacy. The launch of Sputnik, the Soviet Union's satellite, in 1957, had shaken the US to its core. It highlighted the potential vulnerability of American communication systems, which relied heavily on telephone lines that could be easily disrupted. The US Department of Defense needed a communication system that was decentralized and resilient, one that could survive a nuclear attack. This system would allow researchers and military personnel to share information quickly and securely, even if parts of the network were destroyed. This need, born out of the Cold War, became the driving force behind the creation of ARPANET. The Advanced Research Projects Agency, established in response to Sputnik, was tasked with developing cutting-edge technologies. ARPA funded research in various fields, including computer science. It was within this context that the seeds of the internet were sown. A vision began to take shape, a network of interconnected computers that could share information seamlessly. At the heart of this vision was a revolutionary concept, packet switching. Before packet switching, communication networks relied on dedicated circuits, much like a traditional telephone line. This meant that two computers had to be physically connected to communicate. If that connection was broken, communication ceased. Two brilliant minds, working independently on opposite sides of the Atlantic, developed the concept of packet switching. Paul Baran in the United States and Donald Davies in the United Kingdom. Baran, working for the Rand Corporation, was tasked with designing a communication system that could survive a nuclear attack. He conceived of a system where messages were broken down into small packets, each with its own address information. Davies, at the National Physical Laboratory in the UK, was also grappling with the limitations of traditional communication networks. He, too, arrived at the concept of packet switching, independently of Baran. He called his version packet switching, a term that stuck. Packet switching allowed these packets to travel independently across the network, taking different routes and reassembling at their destination. If one path was blocked, the packets could simply reroute, making the network incredibly resilient. With the concept of packet switching in place, ARPA set out to build its revolutionary network, ARPANET. The task was awarded to a team at Bolt, Baranek and Newman, a technology company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The team, led by Frank Hart, included a young and brilliant computer scientist named Leonard Kleinrock. Kleinrock had done groundbreaking work on packet switching theory while at MIT. His calculations helped prove that packet switching could work in practice. The first four nodes of ARPANET were installed at UCLA, Stanford Research Institute, UC Santa Barbara, and the University of Utah. On October 29th, 1969, the first message was sent from UCLA's node to Stanford, marking the official birth of ARPANET. The network grew rapidly, connecting universities and research institutions across the United States. ARPANET's primary purpose was to facilitate communication and collaboration among researchers working on government-funded projects. 
This interconnected network of computers allowed researchers to share data, resources and ideas more easily than ever before. What started as a military funded project quickly evolved into a vibrant community of scientists and engineers pushing the boundaries of computer science. They shared code, collaborated on projects and engaged in lively discussions, laying the groundwork for the collaborative spirit of the internet. As ARPANET grew, its users discovered unforeseen possibilities. One such discovery, which would have a profound impact on the future of communication, was email. In 1971, Ray Tomlinson, a computer programmer at BBN, sent the first electronic mail message. Tomlinson developed a program that allowed users on different computers connected to ARPANET to send messages to each other. He chose the at symbol to separate the user's name from the computer's name, a convention that persists in email addresses. The ability to send messages electronically revolutionized communication, offering a faster and more convenient alternative to traditional mail. Email quickly became one of ARPANET's most popular applications, paving the way for the instant communication we enjoy today. It wasn't just scientists and engineers who saw the potential of this new form of communication. Section 6. A language for the internet, TCP IP. As ARPANET expanded and other networks emerged, a new challenge arose. How to connect these disparate networks? Different networks use different protocols or languages to communicate, making it difficult for them to talk to each other. Enter Vint Cerf and Robert Kahn, two visionaries who developed a solution, TCP IP. TCP IP, or Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, is a suite of networking protocols that provides a common language for computers to communicate over a network. Cerf and Kahn designed TCP IP to be a simple, robust, and scalable protocol that could connect networks of any size and type. TCP is responsible for breaking data into packets, ensuring they arrive in order and retransmitting lost packets. IP handles the addressing, ensuring that packets are delivered to the correct destination. The beauty of TCP IP lies in its simplicity and flexibility. It doesn't care about the underlying hardware or the type of network it's running on. This allows different networks to seamlessly connect, paving the way for a truly global network of networks, the internet. Section seven. Where are we going? We need DNS. As the internet grew, so did a new problem, remembering complex numerical addresses. Each computer on the internet has a unique IP address, a string of numbers that identifies it on the network. Imagine having to remember a long string of numbers for every website you want to visit. To solve this problem, a new system was needed, the Domain Name System, or DNS. Developed in the early 1980s, DNS acts as the Internet's phone book. It translates human readable domain names, like google.com, into numerical IP addresses that computers understand. When you type in a web address, your computer contacts a DNS server to look up the corresponding IP address. The DNS server then directs your computer to the correct website. This system, invisible to most users, is crucial for the internet's usability. Without DNS, navigating the internet would be a daunting task, limited to those who could remember long strings of numbers. Section eight, echoes of the past. Security in the digital age. The internet has come a long way from its humble beginnings as a military funded research project. Today, it connects billions of people worldwide, transforming how we communicate, work and live. However, the internet's early design decisions continue to have a profound impact on its security. ARPANET, designed for openness and collaboration, did not prioritize security. The internet inherited this open architecture, making it vulnerable to various, name, the the lack of built-in security mechanisms in the internet's core protocols has led to challenges in combating spam, hacking and cybercrime, as the internet evolved from a small trusted community to a vast and often anonymous network. Security became a paramount concern. Today, ensuring the security and privacy of data online remains one of the most significant challenges facing the internet. From the very beginning, the internet was built on trust. As the internet grew, so did the need for security measures to protect users and their data. 
Section 9. The World Wide Web. A future unimagined. In the early 1990s, a new innovation emerged, transforming the internet from a network primarily used by academics and researchers into a global phenomenon, the World Wide Web. Tim Berners-Lee, a British scientist at CERN, developed the World Wide Web. He envisioned a system where documents could be linked together, creating a web of information that anyone could access. Berners-Lee created HTML, HTTP, and the first web browser, making it easy for anyone to create and share content online. The World Wide Web opened up the internet to the world, leading to an explosion of creativity, innovation, and information sharing. The internet's impact on society has been profound, transforming how we communicate, learn, work, and entertain ourselves. From social media to e-commerce, online education to telemedicine, the internet has revolutionized countless aspects of our lives. As we look to the future, the internet promises even more exciting possibilities. From the internet of things to artificial intelligence, the internet will continue to shape our world in ways we can only imagine.